This is the story of Futura Junko, a Japanese high school student who was kidnapped, violated, molested, and forcefully ravished by a group of no-do-gooders. Her case was referred to as the concrete-encased high school girl murder case because her corpse was found in a drum filled with concrete. For young boys orchestrated this harmful, illegal, and heinous crime against young, beautiful, talented, and intelligent Futura Junko. Hiroshi Mayano, Joe Ogura, Nabaharu Minato, and Yasushi Watanabe were the perpetrators. All of them were teenagers. Their behavior has a symbolism of persistent mischievousness, civil disobedience, and lack of accountability. It was described as the worst case of juvenile delinquency in modern Japan. Futura was born on the 18th of January, 1971 in Miyazato, Saitama Prefecture in Japan. She was the second of three children and an only daughter. She was a high school student, but she worked at a plastic molding factory as a part-time after school. She needed to save enough money for her graduation trip. She seemed to have a well-thought-out plan for her future because she also got a job to work in an electronic company in readiness for when she graduated from school. Her plan was to go into music and become an idol singer. She was very attractive, intelligent, and had an awesome personality. Her smile was beautiful. Her hair was long and luscious, and her height was good for the kind of entertainment and marketability idol singers are known for. In fact, her future was beautiful. Barely a month after she started her part-time job on the 25th of November, 1988, on her ride home after work, she had no premonition that danger was waiting for her on the way. If she knew, she probably would have either stayed back at work or found any route home. As she rode her bike home thinking about the final episode of her favorite television show Tanbo translated Dragonfly, Minato Nabahara kicked Futura off her bicycle and ran away. Futura was dazed. She hadn't expected that, but wait, there was a more sinister thing waiting for her. Hiroshi Mayano appeared out of nowhere and volunteered to take her home. Futura obliged. In hindsight, even if she refused his offer, there was every possibility she would be abducted anyway. It was the gang's stock in trade. It was bound to happen. Talk about being at the wrong place at the wrong time. For her, that was her normal route home, but on that particular day, at that exact location where those miscreants chose to abduct their victim at that moment was a bad luck for Futura. Hers wasn't the first, and it certainly wasn't the last. Unknown to Futura, it was a carefully planned strategy between Mayano and Minato who were roaming around the neighborhood with the intention of robbing and molesting local women. It just so happened that they saw Futura and Mayano instructed Minato to kick her off the bike and run away while he would play the Good Samaritan and kidnap her. It was under this guise of a rescuer that he took her to a warehouse and assaulted her. Thereafter, he forced to go to a hotel with him and molested her again under the threat of taking her life if she refused to comply. Futura was terrified. She cried and pleaded with her assailant, but that seemed to fuel his passion for more sadistic crime against her. Mayano then called Minato and other friends Joe Ogura and Yasushi Watanabe from the hotel where he held her captive. He boasted to them about his conquest of an innocent, beautiful, but helpless soul while he looked at her proudly. Ogura wanted to have a taste. So he asked Mayano to detain Futura so others boys could participate in the molestation. Like I said earlier, it was their stock in trade. They were a part of a gang that assaulted local women and gangs. They had even captured another victim whom they molested violently before releasing her. She was indeed lucky to be alive. Early in the morning of November 26th, Mayano took Futura to a park very close to the hotel where Minato, Ogura, and Wanate waited for them. Futura trembled uncontrollably, their muscles tense and rigid as he ravaged her. Her breaths came in short, shallow gasps, her heart raced erratically. Wide eyes dart around, pupils dilated, searching for a way of escape. Her skin felt clammy and cold to the touch, as her body cried for survival over comfort. The four juveniles forced her Ogo with them to another location, a house owned by Minato's parent. Minato was the boy who kicked her off her bike. His parents' house became their regular meeting spot for their evil rendezvous. Futura was overwhelmed by a sense of dread, her thoughts consumed by the perceived danger. Her fear made it difficult for her to focus or make decisions to escape. 
Because you see, the boys had ransacked her backpack and found her notebook which had her home address on it. They threatened that the Yakuza members would kill her family if she escaped or even tried to escape. Yakuza members are members of a notorious crime syndicate in Japan. She was overcome by a profound sense of helplessness. She desperately sought safety or reassurance from them, but they were wild animals. She cried rivers. Her voice quivered and become hoarse as she pleaded for her life. But it all fell on deaf ears. As the boys assaulted her one after the other, her body was on fire. Her entire being was consumed by the overwhelming sensation of impending danger of what next to expect. When Futura parents didn't see her the next day being 27th of November, they contacted the police and reported her missing. The miscreants got wind of this development and commanded her to call her mother to tell her she had run away but was safe with some friends. This she was forced to do three times to convince her parents she was alright. The police also called off their investigation, leaving Futura at their mercy. Minato parents saw Futura with the boys the day she was reported missing with their son, but she pretended to be his girlfriend because she was threatened. However, Minato's parents knew she had been abducted and was being molested by her son and his gang. He confessed to the abduction after his parents assured him they would not report him and his gang to the police. On the 28th of November, three days after Futura was kidnapped, Minato invited two other boys to his parents' house. They were Tetsuo Nakumura and Koichi Yahara. He took them to the room Futura was kept captive on the upper floor. She was dressed in a long-sleeved t-shirt and a skirt Mayano had stolen from a clothing store a few days prior. As the boys drank cough medicine while pretending it was drugs and acting as if they were high, Futura was in intense panic mode and attempted to escape while screaming in fear. Mayano lurched forward grabbing her legs while Ahara covered her face with a pillow to muffle the scream. Minato's parents heard Futura's cry for help and were awoken from their sleep. When they went to check what the commotion was all about, Minato convinced them nothing was wrong. They believed and went back to them downstairs. Then the boys proceeded to violate her one after the other. Futura was completely faggied out. She was extremely tired and exhausted, completely worn out and drained of energy. She was a terrible sight. While the gang was at it, she lost consciousness. She was entirely unresponsive. She just laid on there staring at the ceiling without blinking. Her mental function was next to none. Minato and his gang continued to hold her captive in his parents' house where they repeatedly ravaged, tortured, and beat her. They repeatedly invited different other guys to this residence to perform the dastardly act on her. This story is a very painful story, I must confess. It is very heartbreaking. According to the group's statements after they were arrested, they confessed to shaving her pubic hair and forced her to dance to music while she was naked and masturbate in front of them. As if that humiliation was not enough, they left her on the balcony in the middle of the night with little clothing on. They inserted objects into every opening in her body, including a lit match, a metal rod, and a bottle, and fours fed her with large amounts of alcohol, milk, and water. She was also forced to smoke multiple cigarettes at once and inhale paint thinner. In one incident, Mayano repeatedly burned Furuta's legs and arms with lighter fluid. By the end of December, Furuta was severely malnourished after being fed only small amounts of food and eventually only milk. Due to her severe injuries and infected burns, she became unable to go to the downstairs toilet and became confined to the floor of Minato's room in a state of extreme weakness. Furuta's appearance was drastically altered from the brutality of the attacks. Her face was so swollen that it was difficult to make out her features. Her body was also severely crippled, giving off a rotting smell that caused the four boys to lose interest in being intimate with her. They needed another victim because their animalistic appetite had to be satisfied. So, the boys kidnapped a 19-year-old woman who, like Furuta, who was on her way home from work and violated her. All this happened under Minato's parents' roof. On the 3rd of January, 1989, Mayano lost a mahjong game and decided to visit Minato's residence the second day 4th of January, which was 40 days after Futura was kidnapped. His intention that day was vengeance but it was directed at a wrong person. He decided to take out his anger on Futura who had nothing to do with the game. 
He did this by pouring flammable lighter fluid on her body and ultimately lit a match. Futura was on fire. In her weak state, she made feeble attempt to put off the fire, but it overwhelmed her. She gradually lost consciousness and became unresponsive. In that sorry state, the boys continued to punch her. They ignited a candle and dripped hot wax on her face, perhaps in an attempt to get a response. They placed two short candles on her eyelids and forced her to drink her own urine. After she was kicked and stomped, she fell onto a stereo unit and collapsed into a fit of convulsions. Since she was bleeding profusely and pus was emerging from her infected burns, the four boys covered their hands in plastic bags. They continued to beat her and dropped an iron exercise ball onto her stomach several times. The attack reportedly lasted two hours. Furuta eventually succumbed to her wounds and she was gone. Gone forever. Less than 24 hours after her death, Minato's brother called to tell him that Furuta appeared to be dead. Afraid of being penalized for murder, the group wrapped her body in blankets and shoved her into a travel bag. They then put her body in a 210-liter drum and filled it with wet concrete. Around 8 p.m., they loaded it and eventually disposed of the drum in a cement truck in Kodo, Tokyo. During her captivity, Furuta had mentioned to her captors several times that she regretted not being able to watch the finale episode of Tanbo, translated Dragonfly in English. Mayano found the videotape of the episode and placed it in the travel bag. As he later explained, it was not because he pitied Furuta, but because he did not want her to return as a ghost and haunt him. On January 23, 1989, Mayano and Ogura were arrested for the gang rape of the 19-year-old girl whom they had kidnapped in December. On March 29, two police officers came to interrogate them, as women's underwear had been found at their addresses. During the interrogation, Mayano believed that one of the officers was aware of his culpability in Furuta's murder. Thinking that Joe Ogura had confessed to the crimes against Furuta, Mayano told the police where to find Furuta's body. The police were initially puzzled by the confession, as they had been referring to the murder of a different woman and her seven-year-old son that had occurred nine days prior to Furuta's abduction, a case which remains unsolved. The police found the drum containing Furuta's body the following day. She was identified via fingerprints. On April 1, 1989, Ogura was arrested for a separate sexual assault and subsequently rearrested for Furuta's murder. The arrest of Watanabe, Minato, and Minato's brother followed. Several other accomplices who participated in abusing and raping Furuta were officially identified including Tetsuo Nakamura and Koichi Ahara, who were charged with assault after their DNA was found on and inside the victim's body. All four defendants pled guilty to committing bodily injury that resulted in death, rather than murder. In July 1990, a lower court sentenced Hiroshi Maiano, the leader of the crime, to 17 years in prison. He was the boy who instructed his friend to kick her off the bike. He was the one who also doused her with flammable liquid and S.E. her on fire. He appealed his sentence, but the high court judge sentenced him to an additional three years in prison. The 20-year sentence is the second longest sentence given in Japan before life imprisonment. He was 18 years old at the time of Furuta's murder. Yasushi Watanabe, who was originally sentenced to three to four years in prison, received an upgraded sentence of five to seven years. He was 17 at the time of the murder. For his role in the crime, Joe Ogura served eight years in a juvenile prison before he was released in August 1999. In July 2004, Ogura was arrested for assaulting Takatoshi Isono, an acquaintance he thought his girlfriend may have been involved with. Ogura tracked Isono down, beat him, and shoved him into his truck. Ogura drove Isono from Adachi to his mother's bar in Meizato where he allegedly beat Isono for four hours. During the time, Ogura repeatedly threatened to kill the man, telling him that he had killed before and knew how to get away with it. He was sentenced to seven years in prison for assaulting Isono and has since been released. Ogura's mother allegedly vandalized Furuta's grave, stating the dead girl had ruined her son's life. Nabaharu Minato, now Shinji Minato, who originally received a four- to six-year sentence, was resentenced to five to nine years by the judge upon appeal. He was 16 at the time of the murder. 
Minato's parents and brother were not charged. His parents said they didn't report to the authority that Futura was in their home because they feared Minato and his gang. After his release, Minato moved in with his mother. However, in 2018, Minato was arrested again for attempted murder after beating a 32-year-old man with a metal rod and slashing his throat with a knife. Furuta's parents were dismayed by the sentences received by their daughter's killers and won a civil suit against the parents of Minato, in whose home the crimes were committed. Mayano's mother reportedly paid Junko Furuta's parents 50 million yen, 370,000 U.S. dollars, in compensation, as ordered by the civil court, after selling their family home. Junko Furuta's funeral was held on April 2, 1989. One of her friend's memorial address stated, Junchan, welcome back. I have never imagined that we would see you again in this way. You must have been in so much pain, so much suffering. The happy we all made for the school festival looked really good on you. Happy is a traditional tube sleeve Japanese coat, usually worn only during festivals. She continued to say that, we will never forget you. I have heard that the principal has presented you with a graduation certificate. So we graduated together, all of us. Junchan, there is no more pain, no more suffering. Please rest in peace. Furuta's intended future employer presented her parents with the uniform she would have worn in the position she had accepted. The uniform was placed in her casket. At her graduation, Furuta's school principal presented her a high school diploma, which was given to her parents. The location near where Furuta's body was discovered has been developed since and is now Wakasa Park. Listen to this advice from a father to his son. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us. Let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol, and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Surely, in vain the net is spread, in the sight of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. Thank you for staying with us. This far. If this is the sort of story you like, subscribe to my channel, click the notification button, and leave your comment. If you have any sentence you would like us to cover, please leave your suggestion in the comment section. Bye.